Hello, everyone. You're welcome to Hidden Figures, 1st of November, and, and I'm your host, Olive Olorunshaye. It's such a delight to have you here this afternoon or evening or morning, as the case may be. And my guest this evening or afternoon or morning, too many time differences, is the wonderful, I, I call her sumptuously anointed, beautiful, inside out, Reverend Laurie Whitstone Idahosa. It's such a delight to have her here this afternoon. I'm just going to be saying this evening. So you do the calculation backwards <laughs> so that you know what, <laughs> because you know what time it is there. So it's going to be saying afternoon, evening, and morning. So you're welcome. Once again, I'm your host, Olive Olorunshaye on Hidden Figures. It's been a tremendous journey of grace that God has given me and you because we've sort of become part like family. Thank God for the feedback. Thank God for the lives that have been changed and transformed because of this vision. It's just a humbling experience. And today I have Pastor Lori here with me this afternoon. And here she is. <laughs> You're welcome, Pastor Laurie, Reverend Laurie, actually. Thank you so <laughs> nice much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yes, my pleasure. Thank you so much for um, um, answering our invitation. I'm so honored to have you here this afternoon. I know that you have a very tight schedule, so we're just going to dive into all that we have to do this evening you're welcome once again and of course everyone let us make reverend laurie feel absolutely welcome she's already welcome she knows that thank you thank you <laughs> you're welcome um i was just going to give them a, a little brief about you is that okay is it necessary <laughs> <laughs> okay okay, me, okay. So they will discover more you. about you from the questions isn't it it's your choice. It's your program. So thank you, though. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now, I'll just probably like pick bits and pieces from here and there for just to give them, they know you already. She's um, uh, Reverend Mrs. Laurie Wetstone de Hose. She was born in Wilmington, Delaware, USA, to Reverend Dr. Gary and Reverend Mrs. Faye Whetstone. I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly. You are very well. Uh, Oh, wow. Good, good. <laughs> What's done? She's married to Bishop F.E. Benson Ida in 2002. And she's a mother of three sons, Feb Jr., Nathaniel, and Judah. Those are powerful names. Those are three nations. <laughs> well done. <laughs> she's a co-founder of Nathan American Academy and Big Ben's Children's Hospital in Benin City, Nigeria, where she works as the director of Campus Life in Benson and Dahosa's university. Uh, Laurie has become a reverend at the age of 18 and she served as a pastor for over a decade with Victory Christian Fellowship in Newcastle. After moving to Nigeria, she became the senior pastor of CGMI Church, unusual where she served for seven years. She's currently the lead pastor at Victory Christian Fellowship in Newcastle, Delaware. And she's also a sought after speaker, coach and influencer. She's a brand ambassador and she recently doubled in modeling in Dubai. Wow, you said, I shouldn't read this. I needed to read it. There's some <laughs> wonderful gems in here. <laughs> they need to know what you've been up to. Oh gosh. <laughs> a woman who has many caps <laughs> and acting as well in Nigeria. Oh, wow. So we're going to have a, a real potpourri of things tonight <laughs> also she has authored wow three books titled every woman's journey that's in 2014 laurie praise 2017 and laurie's 22 2018 powerful fantastic books uh she's the author of a life transforming blog found at laurieidahosa.com and has contributed articles to numerous publications she has won numerous awards for her humanitarian work most especially with IDPs and youth. She continues to mentor thousands daily via her social media handles at Idahosa Lori. And pam, 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 here she is on <laughs> Hidden Figures to be a huge blessing to us. So you're welcome once again. So over to you. We're going to go straight into the questions because we have limited time. This is going to be limited or powerful to the praise and glory of God Almighty. Father, add your blessing to this session. Minister to us, touch us by the help of your Holy Spirit. Transform lives, heal the brokenhearted, and um, illuminate any dark areas in our lives. And let this day bring joy 
to many, oh Lord, as they look back on it in Jesus' name. And let Pastor Laurie be a huge blessing to all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm getting used to calling you Reverend Laurie, actually. I think I'm a bit behind calling you Pastor. Okay, so our first question this evening is, why did you decide to marry Bishop Feb? You know, please share your love story very briefly. <laughs> well, I met my husband when I was 13, and Ooh. he was much older than me. He was 14, and oh, wow. we, met, <laughs> we met in Nigeria. <laughs> my father and the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa were friends, oh, and good. Papa Idahosa had invited our family to come over for a missions trip. Uh, they were going to do a crusade together with my dad, and that's when uh, I first met my husband and mm, uh, we developed a friendship and a connection um, from that young age. We, you know, that was before email and social media and everything. Know, so yeah. we were writing physical letters back and forth. And wow. And um, he ended up coming to the U.S. and uh, finishing his high school in the U.S. So I got to spend a bit more time with him. And then his undergraduate school at Oral Roberts University, I decided to go to the same university with him. Uh, mm. Then we just kept building a friendship. Uh, then finally, in uh, much later, when I was 27, I turned 28 just a few days after our wedding. Uh, when I was 27, I became Mrs. Idahosa. Ooh. So there's a lot. There's a lot I could tell you in the middle of that story. But I know <laughs> from 13 years old, that's a pretty long time. But we just story, leave yeah. it to our imagination. Beautiful story. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank now, you. how were you able to gracefully combine being a leading woman in ministry and a mother in a foreign country? Because it does say that you do some things in Nigeria, you pastor and um, lead some organizations as well. So how are you able to balance that and do that? You know, I believe that whatever it is that God has called us for, he's given us the grace to do. Awesome. And so God doesn't put us in a position or give us um, something to do on our assignment to do that. He doesn't um, give us the tools that we need to be able to do it. And so I'm grateful to God for my, my upbringing. Um, I was raised as a pastor's child, but also as a missionary's child. Uh, oh, my parents, okay. uh, we lived in Guatemala for a period. I lived in Guatemala as a single woman. Um, and then my parents uh, had my brother and I living in Indonesia as missionaries for a while. And mm. so they were always um, introducing us to different cultures. And so we kind of grew up with a much different worldview than the average child, which just mm. looks at you know, their, their immediate community. Yeah. So by the time I got married, I had already been to over 40 different countries. Um, I'd already been you know, exposed to so many different ministry, um, ministry expressions, let's say. <laughs> and so it, it made okay. it um, a bit easier for me to, to fit into the Nigerian culture because I, first of all, love the Nigerian culture. I love yeah. the, the country. I love the people. I think that's essential. If yes. you're going to fit into any environment, yeah. it can't it just be a, um, a job. It has yeah. to be something you're passionate about. That's true. And I came in with um, a total love in my heart for the Nigerian people. And Thank you. I think from that love, yes, from that <laughs> love, um, kind of, I believe that's what really gave me the strength and the ability to, mm. to function in the office that God's called me to, because it's starting from a place of love, a place of humility, yeah. a place of wanting to serve. That's and true. when you're coming in, you know, ready to serve, you, you know, your assignment, you know, what, what, the, the ministry gift is supposed to do. You know, you're meant to call to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. You're not yeah. confused by all of the distractions um, yeah. that are out mm. there and all the different things that people are labeling ministry as these days. Um, mm. It makes it easier to, to stay focused. So I, I really thank God for my upbringing. I thank God that I was well grounded. I went to Bible school before I went to the university. So I, okay. I had a a good Bible school background. Um, I went to the school of ministerial training. I lived as a missionary and I went to a missionary training program. So by the time I was coming into the Nigerian culture and the Nigerian community as a wife, I believe that I was, I was ready to, um, you know, to serve with my eyes open and knowing what, uh, what my assignment was, what my restrictions might be, and then how to navigate those waters. Awesome. Wonderful. You were equipped. <laughs> Thank God for grace. <laughs> Thank God for grace. 
<laughs> oh, that is brilliant. Thank you so much. I mean, I love that bit about love. Where, where there's love, you know, love conquers all, the wins all. And if you, if you, what you don't love you, and respect, you can't attract. So I guess it was the exactly. love in you that attracted the people to you. I mean, I haven't known you personally, but I can feel that love and I felt a natural Thank attraction you. to you. Thank you <laughs> Thank for being you. such a loving person. Thank you. Thank you. And we're very loving Niger people. Nigerians are very loving. Extremely. Okay. Nigerians are wonderful. I don't understand. You know, some people, especially my friends that have come over to visit, they're like, oh, everybody's so aggressive. And I'm like, they're not. It's just, it's just they're, they're, the Nigerian people are not necessarily aggressive per se. Yeah. They're just, they're, they express everything at 100%. So if, we're very if they love you, they're loving you all in. <laughs> if they're angry with you, they're angry with you all in. You know, all the it's a... If they're worshiping God, they're all in. Uh, all the way. <laughs> we actually we actually wrote a song about hailing Jesus all the way. <laughs> oh wow, that's true. That's true. Yeah. We go, go to hell. hell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. So straight into the next question: How can you counsel a woman in ministry on how to deal with rejection? You know, women because of agenda there's rejection on at all levels and of definitely ministry does not insulate you from it so how would you counsel yeah <laughs> it doesn't insulate you in fact it exposes you to a whole <laughs> lot more rejection on a public yeah. stage you don't get yes. to get rejected privately you're rejected publicly <laughs> definitely <laughs> So I, I think honestly, a strong sense of uh, self-image and knowing who you are in Christ, mm. um, you know, once you really are anchored in Christ, and I know this might sound kind of cliche or maybe too pastoral, but it's the truth. True. Um, yes. Once you're anchored in Christ and you know who you are in Christ, you know, um, you, you're anchoring, your, your, your foundation is solid. Then yeah. when all these winds blow of rejection, insults, criticisms, mm. you know, all these things, you see them more as, oh, I feel so sorry for that person because oh. if they're, if they're rejecting me, they must come from a really, a, a place of real brokenness. Mm. You know, this must be their trauma that's acting out because I know that's I didn't right. do anything to hurt them. I know mm. I didn't do anything to offend them. So mm. if they're, if they're responding to me in this way, then it, it means that there's something deeper going on on the inside mm. of them to be addressed. And I believe that God can give you compassion for your enemies. And yes. I believe that's, and I hate to use the word enemies because I don't believe that people are necessarily our enemies because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Blood, but yes. The people we have only who, one enemy. That's right, the exactly. <laughs> but the people who um, respond in ways that could appear as if they want to be um, mm. a thorn in your flesh. Um, yeah. You know, I think that it's it's really when you see them through the eyes of God and you can really ask God to to give you insight into their soul, their mind, their will, their emotions and yeah. and really understand where they're coming from. Then it 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 changes your perspective. So you're not no longer feeling like, oh, these people hate me or these people don't they don't like mm. the way I look or the way I dress or the color of my skin yeah. or whatever the case may be. Um, you can look at it more from the, the place of saying wow, if they don't like the color of my skin, then there must be something going on inside of them. Mm. Because God, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. God made us yeah. all beautiful and he made us in his image and likeness. So yes. if they can't see that, then they need teaching. They need revelation. They need to mm. grow. Mm. And so I, I believe that's how I've dealt with, with rejection in, the, in, in ministry and in all in all aspects, is I see the when when it comes at me, I see it more as a problem with the person and not necessarily a problem with me. That's true. That's fantastic. Thank you. That's compassion. That's what Jesus had for us, and that's why. He yeah. Did that. Otherwise, so we much. won't last if we live yeah. to rejection. No. And we we and if we try to respond to everything and we try to mm -mm. defend ourselves, mm -mm. you know, as I, the Bible says, when Jesus was reviled, he reviled not again. So when yeah. when people come at you, you don't just you know say, oh, you want to insult me? Okay, I'll insult you. And you give a go, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's not. Sense. It's not. It doesn't honor God. So um, you just ask God to show you the heart of people, and and then He gives you compassion, and then He helps you walk through that path, um, even yeah. if it's a lonely path. He'll help you walk through it with grace. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you. That's a lovely response. Now, straight off to our next questions. Now, um, why, why is a vibrant, because there's a book you wrote there, it says uh, Lori Praise. So why is a vibrant prayer life vital to a woman 
in ministry, a woman, leading woman in ministry, why do you think prayer is key, vital? Well, you know, the Bible says that Jesus is that friend that sits closer than a brother. Mm-hmm. And truly as a woman in ministry, as a pastor's wife, as a bishop's wife, as somebody who's serving as a, as a senior pastor, it's kind of a lonely road. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you kind of, you, you, you have friends and you have acquaintances and you have people that you talk to and that you you're in fellowship with, but um, the, the more you grow and the higher that God takes you the more narrow your community is and Mm. the more narrow your community is the more i'm so sorry can you hear that in the background i'm so sorry no i can't okay great (laughs) (laughs) thank you the more narrow that your community is the more that you really need to um draw closer to god and you know he's that person you can talk to about anything and my prayer life with god is not you know one of these that's full of these and thou's um, mm-hmm. I'm also, while I do pray in the Holy spirit and I pray yes. in the, I'm baptized with the power of the Holy spirit, with the praying in other tongues, yeah. I don't necessarily kabosh as they call it in quotes. Um, <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I don't necessarily kabosh for five hours straight, um, mm-hmm. unless the Holy spirit is leading me into a time of intercession. Um, yeah. I talk to God, like he's my friend and that's yeah. why the prayer life is so important. I yeah. can tell God, you know, yesterday, for example, I had seven kids in my house and I was exhausted. I mean, Ooh. I had, I was, I was alone <laughs> with seven kids and they just felt like they wanted to run the whole house upside down. Oh and I had just preached two services, um, Ooh. had handled the pre-service prayer, the leadership meeting, um, the post-service meeting, and I was exhausted and I'm just, my, my relationship with God is just simply, you know, God, you got to help me with this honestly because I, I don't have the energy for these kids right now. <laughs> and, and then he helps you and he gives you ideas. I mean, God yeah. gave me an idea yesterday to manage the children that I had in my house. My kids had to have all their friends over yesterday. Mm-hmm. And so God just kind of gave me the, the, the creative idea on how to manage the kids so that I wasn't running out of energy. Yes. And, um, and that, that just came from simply whispering a prayer and just saying, God, I need your help here because physically I feel like I'm going to pass out. And, uh, <laughs> yes, and so prayer, prayer is fellowship. It is. Yeah. It and is. we talk to him. He talks back to us. Definitely. It's a two way street. And, um, yeah. and that's why I think prayer is so important because we need somebody to talk to that can give us a quick answer and mm-hmm. whose answer is always going to be right. So and true. So true. <laughs> give you insights to what, about what to do and what's ahead. That's yeah. brilliant. Seven boys, not just kids. Boys. Yeah, seven girls? boys, exactly. Boys. Seven boys. <laughs> you need at, at that point in time, you're like, Lord, you're a present help in time of trouble. This is trouble. <laughs> seven boys with lots of energy and hungry stomachs. So, Ooh, <laughs> like, so there's cooking I was like, in I realized it as well. I hadn't even cooked, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? <laughs> so I I ran out and bought them fried chicken from the <laughs> from the fast food. You have to at that point and in I'm time. I'm like, guys, this is it. This is what you're eating. Like it or not. Take it. Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't want mom to burn out. Oh, no. really? Thank you. Prayer is talking to God. Simply yeah. put. It's not every time you kabash. I know. There are times you just like, I'm like, Lord, can we just talk heart to heart right now? I need to pour up my feelings. By the way, I know you know how I feel. You probably, but I'm going to tell you about it because I, <laughs> I just want to be open with you right now. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's Yeah, that's great. And he does always come through. That's a beautiful thing about him. Thank you so much. Now, um, how did you go from, oh, let me, oh, let me put it like this. How, how can you share your journey to becoming the lead pastor in a church? You know, we... We come from humble beginnings of ministry, probably usher or choir. And then all of a sudden, over the years, you prove your metal. there's a grace, there's a calling. And then you find that you're the one standing behind the pulpit, you know, speaking as um, like a, a messenger, like a vessel to be from God to the people. How did you get to that point in your walk with God to become a lead pastor in a church? You know, I believe that when you're pastoring, it's a. Where did you go? Yeah, I see. You Sorry, know. I had a call that was coming in. I had to decline it. Okay, thank I you. Believe that, <laughs> I believe that when you're pastoring, you, um, you're, you're pastoring, your pastoral call comes from God. It doesn't come from man. So you're, it's not a yeah. natural 
pathway of elevation. I believe that people that follow the nat- natural pathway of elevation are not always the most productive or effective. Mm. Um, you know, so I, I really believe that the calling comes from God and then your equipment has to be deliberate. You have to equip yourself. You have to train yourself. You have to grow in the knowledge of the word. You have to grow in your experiences. You have to learn from your mistakes. Mm. And so as a, as a young uh, pastor in my twenties, uh, I was, I was pastoring in my father's church as an assistant pastor and serving diligently in that role and also leading from the pulpit and different things like that, but under the authority of, of my father's church. And then when I got to Nigeria, uh, I served as a, as a pastor's wife for a period of time. Yeah. And then when an opportunity came up to, to pastor my own church, um, I had actually started going in as part of the um, kind of the rescue team because there had been a, a breakaway of the church. The church was very big and vibrant, uh, mm. but the pastor left and he left with the entire congregation oh. and left it down to 30 people and um, had taken all the sound equipment and decorations. And basically the the church was down to a shell, um, mm-hmm. but it had formally, it had, and it all happened in a matter of a week. Uh, and so I had gone in as a part of the uh, restructuring team to organize it. And as I was there for a month and two months, I just came back to my husband and I said, I really feel a strong call to, to stay here and to serve this particular mm. body. And he was like, why don't you take over as senior pastor? Okay. And I said, okay, I can do that. Um, are you okay with me not being in the headquarters church with you? And he was like, absolutely, you're not doing anything there anyway. Uh, because <laughs> in the headquarters church at that particular time, I wasn't very effective in ministry because of some various restrictions. So okay. I was I was kind of liberated to be able mm. to, um, to go in and pastor Church Unusual in Nigeria. Uh, and we were able to grow it back to an extremely vibrant church with all new members, uh, mostly people oh. who had gotten born again in our community. Um, oh. This really um, did very, very well. And wow. then now, now I'm a pastor in the U.S. and my father's church again is the lead pastor. So it's, um, I think it's a process. It's a life process. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Wow. That's awesome. That's beautiful. And that brings us to my next question, which says that how can a woman in ministry or, disc- or yeah, a woman in ministry or women generally as well, they have different things they do, business, career, so, you know, sometimes supporting their husbands in different sectors. Um, how can she discover and take ownership of her own identity in the midst of a myriad of responsibilities? You know, don't lose yourself. Who are you in the midst of all the responsibilities? How do we find, discover our identity, you know, and take ownership of it? Well, I believe it's our responsibility to schedule our days. So yeah. what we put into our days is our fault. So if you <laughs> if you overschedule yourself, then um, nobody can hold nobody can be blamed but you. So I think that was something that I had to learn at some point was that mm. um, not to overcommit myself, not to overschedule myself, so that there was time to be Laurie and to yeah. um, you know to continue to. Uh, become more and more self-aware because I believe that the more self-aware you are, the better person you are for the community that you're serving. Um, mm. You can't help mm. others if you're not helped yourself. You can't set free others free if you yourself are bound. And so that time of just uh, maintaining good friendships that are outside yeah. of the circle of ministry. Uh, I have great friends that uh, they're not pastors. They're not, uh, they're mm. not ministers. We don't have to wear that hat when we're together, but we just, yeah. um, we just, we just gel and we get each other. And I think oh. having, having real friendship and real relationships of, with people that are sincere and people that you can be yourself with really kind of helps you keep that balance because mm. ministry is just so plastic. I mean, there's just a lot of it. And if you get, it is, it's, it's exhausting. If you get stuck into the cycle of plastic ministry, then you'll just find that you don't even recognize yourself because you're just, hallelujah, praise the Lord. God bless you, sister. And, you know, you're, you're listening to yourself and you're like, I don't even want to hear somebody say that to me. So why am I saying that to them? You know, but, but the more that you um, have those types of relationships that keep you balanced, that keep you centered, that keep you um, 
in the space of being who you really are, then you can also carry that and transition that into uh, your your pulpit ministry or your your uh, public ministry. Awesome. Thank you so much. You keep it real. Keep it real <laughs> and grounded. And then you discover who you are. Thank you so much. And of course, that leads me to my um, next question. You know, I, I know where you, where you say, and of course, I follow you on Instagram and all that. I remember I saw oh, you doing the you. walk and I was like, I must have looked at it like five times. It, it tickled me so <laughs> <laughs> I like you're having so much fun in the cold, <laughs> and I like the way mm-hmm. some Feb just took you and put a wrap around you, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but that's keeping so it real, you know. <laughs> yeah, and that's and the only so, way we can be because he yeah. would he wouldn't like me if I was plastic. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, you just have to like take the weight of the burden off, and it's. The work of the ministry is work of God. You, 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 you're not called to the whole world, so you have your life as well. Jesus has already done the dying for everyone, so <laughs> he died so that we might live. <laughs> there you go. So we got to live the life, <laughs> abundant Absolutely. life. Awesome. So my next and final question for this evening, it says you're a very down-to-earth person, optimistic and fun-loving. I call you sumptuously anointed, sweet, you know, in a <laughs> dignified manner. So what's Thank your inspiration? You. Now I know that you say ministry can be plastic. So apart from that, what's your inspiration? Well, honestly, I think I've just seen so much. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, there's there's really not any major ministry out there in the world that I haven't been exposed to firsthand. Mm. And, and I've seen what the people are like behind closed doors. Oh. And I've seen what they're like out in front of people. Mm. And I've committed to myself to be the same person. That's to, right. Um, to not have these two personas. Um, mm. And, and it, it would be very easy to do because I think all pastors have a little element of actor in them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they know how to put it on. Um, and it's very tempting sometimes to just, yeah. you know, and, and there are some times where you have to speak to your flesh and put your flesh under. I'm not saying that you get up there Ooh, on the pulpit and, course. you know, tell oh, everybody, yeah. you know, my husband, it made me so angry this morning. No, Man. no, no. There's, there's, yeah, there's yeah. wisdom in everything, for everything you know, it's definitely. Yeah. Uh, but I just, I think I've seen so much in ministry over the years, especially being exposed to it since I was a small child. And mm, I, just, that's true. I made a personal decision to uh, marry my professional life with my personal life and mm. to be as authentic as I can be um, yeah. in the spaces that God has called me to influence. And I've also accepted that I'm not for everybody. You know, there's some people who yeah. really love that plastic ministry mm. and, you know, that's where they feel the sense of glory per se, or they feel mm. the anointing when somebody is, you know, saying, Ooh, you know, this, <laughs> but I don't talk like that. I, I don't, <laughs> Ooh, you know, in my regular conversation. So why would I do it from the pulpit? Mm. Um, and so I think that's kind of where I've, I've asked God to give me the grace is to be able to marry my uh, professional persona with my personal life and to just be real. And I've, and I've told God, I'm like, if I can't be me, I don't want to do it. Mm. Um, you know, because God, you made me the way I am. That's uh, true. So you didn't make me that way so that I can have a dual personality Mm. and dualism is I think one of the biggest traps of the enemy, because the more that you live a dualistic life, Mm -hmm. the more, um, you know, personal and professional and personal and ministry, um, the more tempting it is to be dualistic in everything, your values, your character, um, and things that really matter that are going to matter for eternity. They're going to put you in that place of heaven or hell. So I think that, um, Authentic, authenticity is essential for, for all believers and especially those of us that are in the pulpit ministry. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. And I think it's easier, isn't it? You don't have to like remember what you are or who you are or what you're, what you're supposed to be uh, behaving, what role you're supposed to be acting in, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's so, it's so exhausting <laughs> to have to pretend and to be like, oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> so uh, that way, whoever knows you, they know you for who you are, and uh, it's easy for them to accept you. So yeah. in that way, you know who you are sent to, you know who accepts you and who doesn't. And Beautiful. if they don't, they're not accepting God because I'm his representative on earth. So. Of course, that's it. So if they don't oh. like me, and I have a problem with him, not with me. Exactly. That's it. That's true. 
Pathways Ambassadors. Thank you so, so much, um, Reverend Thank Laurie, for you. this time out with you. It's been such a wonderful session with you. And it's been short, but it's definitely been impactful. Thank you. Because every question, response is loaded. And of course, okay. it's as a result of many years of experience of walking with God. And um, there's nothing like having to like sit with you and share these moments with you because mm-hmm. I have definitely been empowered and enriched and um, I have okay. a deeper understanding. And I'm sure my audience as well would definitely be blessed by this session. Thank you for letting mm-hmm. us know about compassion, marrying our personality with our professional persona and knowing that it's essential that we should talk with God, you know, and of course your relationship with your husband and through the years, it's like getting married to your best friend. So yes. sure if you're about to marry, make sure you marry your best friend. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Absolutely. Of, of course, your background as well, being a missionary, it's um, and being raised as a Christian from a Christian home and all that. And still with all that, you depend fully on the grace of God, which is essential. So thank you. Thank you. Great thank summary, you. by the way. Wow. Oh, <laughs> it's great. I'm like, okay. <laughs> thank you That's so great, much. That's great. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I've enjoyed myself with you. And I've I enjoyed know myself you a- with you too. Oh, brilliant. Don't worry. Um, I don't live in Nigeria, so we will be meeting yeah. <laughs> and I come to Delaware. <laughs> Yeah, I would love that. I would love that. I do have a friend close by that I'm planning a trip with. So that will encourage me more so that when I do come, I have two friends there. I will see you definitely. 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 I, would like, I would like that. <laughs> and we have fun together. Definitely. Come over when I've got seven kids so you can help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love kids. I will. Definitely. I will. I love kids. I love playing with kids. And I do understand your reality when you have seven kids. I'm like, whoa. And seven boys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love to be a help. I love to be a help. Yeah. Aww, All right. So I'm going to let you. you go. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Have a great day, everybody. And you too. Have a beautiful evening. Love to everyone. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Yeah, have a beautiful evening. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Hope you enjoyed Hidden Figures tonight with Reverend Laurie Whitstone Idahosa. She stood us so much, such a beautiful woman of God, a unique gem and definitely a wonderful gift to the body of Christ. I would encourage us to go over the interview and listen to it. And, you know, there's so much truth and knowledge and experience that you can draw out from the wisdom that she shared with us today. And it will definitely help you so much in ministry, relating with people, dealing with rejection, being able to do the work of ministry. You don't have a double personality. There's no point. God knew who you were before he called you. So we're supposed to be his representative. Whatever you're going to show, you know, just make sure that you reflect God. That's all. Reflect God as, as you're carrying on in your walk with God, you know, what you need to do is study yourself, make sure you're becoming more like Christ. Let Christ be the one you're following. Let him be your model. And once you do that, because Christ, he didn't fail, he, he, he fulfilled his assignment here on earth, you definitely will not fail and you will accomplish every assignment that God has given to you. So this is me saying, I love you. Thank you for coming onto Hidden Figures. Tonight, I might have said that the time is short, but I'm sure we've almost spent an hour. It's like, it's quarter past, almost quarter past six here. I'm getting you used to the time change. I'm almost, I think, quarter past seven. We went back one hour yesterday. So it's like 10 minutes past six, definitely almost an hour. But it was a beautiful hour. It went by fast, but it was an enriching, empowering hour. So I look forward to seeing you for our grand finale for the year in December. That's the first Monday in December. That's the 6th of December. Note it in your diary and we'll have a wonderful grand finale together. So till then, it's me, Pastor Olive, saying thank you for coming to Hidden Figures this evening. God bless you. Enjoy your week and happy new month. For me, it's a month of celebration because it's a month of my wedding anniversary. So may it be a month of celebration to you as well. God bless you. Love you. Good night. <laughs>